Now, how many have you been sort of um, discerning and perceptive about for the last three Sundays what God was zeroing in on? I believe I ministered about um, spirits. And I asked the Lord, I said, God, well, what are the dominating spirits among us? And God said, spirits of rebellion, spirits of unforgiveness. He said, spirits of religion and spirits of infirmity. Now, prior to this, God spoke to me some time ago when we had a crusade in Suffolk. And right in the middle of the crusade, he said, Larry, he said, it is deliverance. In other words, that's what my people need, deliverance. I said, okay, Lord, okay, okay, I'm, 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 I'm trying, I'm trying to get it. And uh, then at some point later, he said, now y'all, Hold your horses, please don't nobody run out. I'm just trying to share what God gave. Because some people are spooked when they hear demons about demons, but I don't want you to be spooked because it's a real part of what's happening in this earth. When Jesus came, he did a lot of delivering. Now this is the master coming from heaven. And he didn't go to the Gentiles to, to deliver. He went to the Jews who were his chosen people, right? All right, just keep that in mind. So the Lord said to me, he said, there are demons in people. And he said, they are hoping not to be discovered. Now, don't look at me funny now because I might think there's something going on with you. <laughs> I'm, I'm just trying to share what the Lord gave me, okay? <laughs> but as we're sharing, if something go off in you, just know that we're understanding because we got to deal with demon power. And they get real mad when you start exposing them. All right. Here's the other fact, and I want you to get this. So follow with me. Now, it's really, really important you follow with what uh, God is sharing with us. So God said there are demons in people hoping not to be dis uh, 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 discovered. And then God said, no later than this morning, he said, demons are Creatures of darkness. Now you got to hear what I'm saying. They're creatures of darkness. They like to work in the dark. And so when God said they're hoping not to be discovered because light, somebody say light, exposes darkness. So now let me give you an example. I don't want to see your hand because you might say, oh, like, okay. how many have seen roaches? In a house. <laughs> so when you come into the house, before you turn the light on, they're sitting just as comfortable on the counter, on the wall, right? But what happened when you turn the light on? They start scattering. Isn't that right? God said, that's the way it is with demons. So they don't want you to expose them. You might as well clap your hands and say, God, go. Ahead. So the fact that they are creatures of darkness. They live in the dark. 
That's where they operate. And as long as no light is shown on them, they're okay. But the, here's the, the tragic thing is this. They live in people's lives year after year after year, even Christians. They hinder the will of God. They hinder the purposes of God. They hinder what God wants to do for individuals. They could care less what God's will is. So if they're operating in people, they have a hold in some area of people's lives. But Jesus is light. The Bible says, and the light shined in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. All right, before I get too far, if you, if you got your word, turn to Ephesians 5. Ephesians 5. When you're there, say amen. amen. All right. <clears throat> Let's stand for the reading of the word. All right, we read responsibly until we read all the way down through verse 21. Verse 1, chapter 5, Ephesians. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children. But fornication and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become its saints. For this you know that no whoremonger, no unclean person, no covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove or expose them. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by what? The by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Together, giving thanks always for all things unto God. And the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Verse, I'm sorry, that should have been 20. But 21, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. My God. Okay. Wow. Father, this is your word. You brought us here today. We're all here to hear what you have to say. Give us very sensitive ears 
that we can truly tune into what you're saying. That your kingdom might be advanced. For we were in darkness, but now we are children of light. Therefore, we thank you. Take control in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. God bless you. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Go ahead and give God a praise. He's a good God. Now, what I want to do is read in two translations, one NIV and the other, the New Living Translation. Teresa Toy, do your hair. One of you read the NIV and the other read the New Living Translation. Come to the mic if you, is there a mic? No, there's not a mic. Okay. Please listen up, everybody. Listen carefully. Now, this is not something that, this is just the word of God. <laughs> so, uh, Ephesians, I'm sorry, Ephesians 5, and the, I'm going to read the NIV. Um, two shakes. Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. But among you, there must not be even a hint of sexual immorality or of any kind of impurity or of greed, because these are improper for God's holy people. Nor should there be obscenity, foolish talk, or coarse joking, which are out of place, but rather thanksgiving. For of this you can be sure, no immoral, impure, or greedy person, such a person is an idolater, has any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of such things, God's wrath comes on those who are disobedient. Therefore, do not be partners with them, for you were once in darkness, but now you are light in the Lord. Live as children of light. For the fruit of light consists in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. And find out what pleases the Lord. Have nothing to do with the fruitless deeds of darkness, but rather expose them. It is shameful even to mention what the disobedient do in secret. But everything exposed by the light becomes visible, and everything that is illuminated becomes a light. This is why it is said, wake up, sleeper, rise from the dead, and Christ will shine on you. Be very careful, then, how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will is. Do not get drunk on wine, which leads to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God the Father for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. That's the NIV, right? That's the NIV. All right. Okay, this is the um, NLT. New Living Translation. Imitate God, therefore, in everything you do, because you are his dear children. Live a life filled with love, following the, the example of Christ. He loved us and offered himself as a sacrifice for us, a pleasing aroma to God. Let there be no sexual immorality, impurity, or greed among you. Such sins have no place among God's people. Obscene stories, foolish talk, and coarse jokes, these are not for you. Instead, let there be thankfulness to God. You can be sure that no immoral, impure, or greedy person will inherit the kingdom of Christ and of God. For a greedy person is an idolater, worshiping the things of this world. Don't be fooled by those who try to excuse these sins, for the anger of God will fall on all who disobey him. Don't participate in the, in the things these people do. For once you were full of darkness, but now you have light from the Lord. 
So live as people of light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. Carefully determine what pleases the Lord. Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that ungodly people do in secret. But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it is said, Awake, O sleeper, rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. So be careful how you live. Don't live like fools, but like those who are wise. Make the most of every opportunity in these evil days. Don't act thoughtlessly, but understand what the Lord wants you to do. Don't be drunk with wine, because that will ruin your life. Instead, be filled with the Holy Spirit, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs among yourselves, and making music to the Lord in your hearts. And give thanks for everything to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. And further, submit to one another out of reverence for Christ. Amen. Come on, let's thank the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Isn't that clear? We don't even really have to preach it. The word speaks clear for itself. Isn't that right? This This is God's mind for his people. He brought us... He paid a dear price for us to be free from demonic influence and oppression in our lives. Why? Because the Bible says God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power who went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil for the father was with him. So it's God designed to heal and break oppressions from God's people's life, right? Because if he doesn't do that, then we will live a life of oppression, when we're supposed to be free. Now, all right, that in mind, we go on with what the Bible says, the things that he brought to my attention. The good part is there's a new power that liberates from sin and death, and it has come into the world through Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, hallelujah. A new power through the life of Jesus has come to liberate captives, set them free, no matter what the conditions are, God's power is able to do so. Now, this is what the Lord said to me back here some time ago. I don't know if it was one of those times when we had one of those heavy messages there, bringing a rebuke there. And so God said, he said, it is God's prerogative to order hearts right before him. In other words, that's my prerogative to order hearts right before me. Because, see, God's coming again, and there's going to be a marriage supper of the Lamb. So, basically, it's like God said, no, that's, that's, that's my prerogative. I have the right to order hearts right before me. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Sometimes people get frustrated when preachers preach the truth, but God said, no, that's my prerogative to order hearts right before me. See, God is concerned about a person's life not making it going to hell. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. So you got to thank him. He's a good God. And then he said, the roots are being torn down. The naysayers, the spirit of opposition, he said. He's dealing with that stuff. God is, I mean, God is serious. All right, now let's go into some of the things that he shared here. We want to look at scripture, see what, uh, see now this is exposure, all right? This is the word of light exposing darkness. And so spirits that's been lodged and holding people back for years have to let them go when they get exposed. If the person wants to be free, you hear what I'm saying? All right, so. Now, rebellion is, is one of the first one that he talks about. Rebellion, let's see, let's try Deuteronomy 18. Let's see what the Bible says. So, uh, I think it was Lamont sharing about how that rebellion worked in him. 
he, uh, before he got delivered, you know, he said he complained about a lot of stuff <laughs> that the church was doing. You know, you ain't did too long. And just, I ain't going out there. You ain't got to go to church that much. Rebellion. And uh, so those spirits, but at the time, he didn't know that's what was going on. He didn't know there was something in him making him reason against what was going on. And that's how spirits of rebellion work. They, they make you think that's your thoughts. And so when a person feels like that's their thought, they say, oh, man, I really need some help. But the help you need is to be delivered from those spirits that's talking to you and lodged there to keep you from thinking that way. God has that power to set people free. And once a person is free, they may come to try to plague your mind, but then they'll be on the outside and not on the inside. All right? Deuteronomy, let's see, 18. You got to love God if he wants to set us free. All you got to do is taste the freedom. You say, Lord Jesus, if I only knew that it was that good. Deuteronomy 18, 9. When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire or that uses divination or an observer of times or an enchanter or witch or a charmer or a consulter with familiar spirits or a wizard or a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination to the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord your God doth drive them out from before you. Thou shalt be perfect with the Lord your God. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto observers of times and unto diviners. But as for you or thee, the Lord your God hath not allowed you so to do. The Lord your God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee of thy brethren like unto me. Unto him you shall hearken or listen. All right. So there's another scripture is found in 1 Samuel 15. Just try to get the scriptures first. 1 Samuel 15. I'm glad we don't have to remain in rebellion. 1 Samuel 15, verse 23. And Samuel said, verse 22, Samuel said, Hath the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams for rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as iniquity and idolatry all right rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft one of the things the holy spirit said to me some not too long ago we had one of those messages that was real tough and a lot of people thought that we were in the flesh. And so when I got back home and was praying, God said, I needed someone to awaken my command. And that's sometime when the word is taken lightly. He said, I needed somebody to awaken my command. And then this is the other thing, what he said. He said that rebellion had turned into witchcraft. That rebellion had turned into witchcraft. And so, he's a great God. He's a great God. Now, all right, one other scripture, and then we're going to go to some other thing. Galatians 5. It's 
Stay with us, y'all. I have enjoyed the, the freedom that he's given me. I know there's more, but that which so far I've been gotten from the Lord, it sure, it sure means a lot, and I want more of his freedom. Galatians 5, verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest. Flesh here meaning the old sinful nature. The nature that we had before we were saved. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, verse 20, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. But here's the thing that's what, what we must keep in mind of the, th of the which I tell you before, Paul said, as I've also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Now that's the thing that should sober us. Because God sets us free not to remain in sinful areas of our lives. To be free is to be in harmony with the Lord. All right. You might get a little tight, but don't, don't, don't run away, please. I, this is something that I feel like the Lord's really put on my heart. Okay. Rebellion and witchcraft. Now, remember what he mentioned in Ephesians, the unfruitful works of darkness. Expose them, but don't be a partaker. And that demons live in the dark. They're creatures of darkness. They hate light. So if demons are operating, they do things in your life and they don't want you to let nobody know or they want you to continue in that darkness with that sin because they know that they have a chance to pull you back if you don't get free from that thing. But when the word comes, it exposes the demon's activities. Once it exposed demons activities, then a person has the right to say, Lord, I want to be free from this thing. And God says, okay, you asked for it, you got it. I'll set you free. He's a great God. Amen. I just love him. Hallelujah. All right. So deliverance. One of the things God reminded me, he said, I did it. That's what I did. I did deliverance. When I came on the earth, you look at Matthew 4, I won't read it, but he said, that's what I did. Because my people needed deliverance. That's what I did. One of, the, one of the few things that he did that was very prevalent in his ministry was cast out demons. The other was healing the sick. So now, if Jesus did that, unbidden, un, un, unlike some people that say, well, the demons are over in Africa. No, demons are all over the world. It's just that in America, they got funny names. And those funny names, it's those funny names so that they can remain there. And I, I don't want to call it a name because somebody might medically try to challenge me. So, but let me just say this. They got themselves some pretty names so that people can embrace it. Nobody can get free if they don't acknowledge that those pretty names a demon is behind it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Demons do not like exposure. 
And so America is full of them, but they have such pretty names. And everybody can embrace it. And so demons can just continue to do what they're doing. They says, well, they don't know any better. The only difference in Africa is that they, they need some help and they know it. They acknowledge. And some of them worship demons. But I'm saying this to say this. They're all over the world, demons. To stop people. To keep the kingdom of God from ruling in a people's life. And so when Jesus came on earth, he understood it well. So he would just go around and he'd cast the demons out. And the demons knew that he understood why the Father had sent him. And they understood that he knew that they were hiding. So when he'd come into the place, they scream. <laughs> Get away from me, you Jesus because they knew light had come to expose those dark works of demons. You can be free from demons. You only got to believe in the cross, what Jesus did to pay the price that you might be free. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. You cannot pay a price to be free. God paid the price for you to be free. But you can believe and God will set you free. Amen. All right. So he said, don't be a part of the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather expose them. Deliverance, Jesus did. Second thing he told me about uh, today or whatever. Not only he said, look at the pattern of Jesus. Second thing he said was the origin of rebellion Started in the garden. Yeah, Jesus had Adam, everything, every tree in the garden you can freely eat. But he said of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you don't touch it. Don't eat of it. And the day you eat of it, you're going to die. Adam understood. So when Eve ate, because she was deceived, Adam wasn't deceived. He chose to obey his wife. So when he did, that's when sin came right into and polluted the whole earth. But Adam rebelled against God. And now everything that came from Adam were seeds that had the potential to rebel. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? Because we were born of our ancestor. He had a rebellious spirit. He bore two sons, Cain and Abel. Abel had a righteous line and Cain had a wicked. But the wicked spirit killed the righteous seed. And the Lord showed me, he said, look at what Fill the earth when the righteous seed was killed. And it got to the point where God said, okay, I got to destroy the earth. All oh, because of Cain's seed. But then, thank God, Adam bore another seed. And that seed, the Bible says, when he came along, then began men to call upon the name of the Lord. Are you hearing? Satan has always been around trying to destroy the work of God. And he's no less today. Okay, so, so that's the origin. Listen to this, write this down. He said, the seed of rebellion is pride. Woo! Somebody say, oh. He said, the seed of rebellion is pride. Pride is at the root of rebellion. Somebody else said, I don't want no parts of that man. It's tough, but I got to plow on. 
It's from the Lord. It's tight, but it's right. Don't worry about it. If you, if, don't worry about it. Just listen, all right? <laughs> uh, you know, we're all in this thing together. Isn't that right? Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to glean from the Lord. But here's what he said. The origin of rebellion was Adam and Eve in the garden. And the seed of rebellion is pride. Now look at it. The seed of rebellion is pride. Who spoke to Eve? The serpent. Satan spoke to Eve because he wanted what God was giving to Adam. He had lost his position. And so now he wants to regain. Because Adam was the prince of this world. So he had to do something to get that back. He couldn't come to Adam because he knew Adam knew. So he came to Eve who didn't know. But he still accomplished his purpose. Are you hear what I'm saying? Sometimes the devil will get to somebody close to you if he knows he can't get to you. What you got to be aware of is what he's doing and how he work. Don't, don't, don't give in to him when he goes to a spouse or goes to a children or somebody. He's out to get after you and you must uh, understand it and not let it happen. Is that right? He may not come to you because you may have your mind made up, but he may come to somebody else that's a little weaker to get to you. That's one of the works of the devil. We're exposing him. Then God said, deliverance is evidence in the kingdom rule. The kingdom of God is a rule of God. God ruling and reigning in the earth. So in order for God to rule and reign, he reigns and rules in people's lives. So the first thing he does, once a person gets saved, that's the first deliverance, great deliverance. Then he starts healing and delivering. Because now their demons have come in through sin, disobedience, and all this stuff. They, so the demons are there. But they have to be dealt with. They have to be cast yeah. out. So when a person gets saved, sometimes people think, oh, I'm okay now. I just need to get a little knowledge. But it's more than that. It's deliverance from the powers of where you used to belong. You change masters. But you now got to be free from the concept that that old master had you under. And so that's a process. And so Jesus came. He began to set them free. Set them free. And then he said, the kingdom of God has come near you. The rule of God. God comes to rule in your life. No more demons ruling in your life. No more demons that won't let you forgive. No more demons that want to keep you down with substance abuse. No more demons ruling in that manner that keep you in strife all the time. No more demon work. But God said, I want you free. I want you at peace. I want you in harmony. I want you in love. I want you to have joy in your heart. In order for that to happen, he said, I got to get those spirits that are making sure that you don't experience the joy that I have died for. Deliverance is evident in the kingdom rule. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Ghost. Some people don't have no joy. Some people wake up frustrated, lay down frustrated. But God says joy is a fruit of the spirit. Yeah. Hallelujah. Jesus said I died for him, paid the price for him, but some don't have no joy. What else can I do? But the joy of the Lord shall be your strength. Yeah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Yeah. Glory to God. God wants you free. Oh, my heart goes out to God's people. God wants us free. God wants us free. He takes no pleasure in our being in bondage. He paid a dear price. Nails were driven in his hand. Nails were driven in his feet. 
a crown of thorns planted on his head, pierced in his side. He hung there to an open shame, all that we might be free. Somebody, hallelujah to the Lamb. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. He wants us free. He wants us free. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God. And then he says, God's purpose in creation. Planet Earth, he said, is to be a replica of heaven. That's why when Jesus came, he says, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he understood how, what heaven was like and he came to do the Father's will. So the Father's will was that God's people be free and that they be filled with life instead of death. Isn't that right? Filled with uh, health instead of sickness and disease. He understood there's no sickness in heaven. There's no death in heaven. There's no strife in heaven. None of that thing. So he says, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jesus came to do the Father's will. It is God's will that things happen down here on earth as it is in the heavens. He said the reason for earth's existence is to be a replica of heaven, a model, an imitation of what heaven is like. It would scare the life out of me if I felt like where I'm going to spend eternity, there's strife and bickering. It would scare the life out of me. I would begin to question whether or not I want to go up there because I'm enjoying a little bit of peace right now. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah, Jesus. But I heard one says, I'm going to a place. Whoo, glory to God. This place that we're going Oh, you just got to go there. Hallelujah. This place that we're going, it ain't nothing like down here yet. Oh, my God. There's no tears, no crying. Hallelujah. No strife. Every day will be at best, like one writer put, like Sunday. But I'll tell you, it's going to be a whole lot better than Sunday because people are suffering down here on Sunday. No more tears. We won't need these artificial lights. For the glory of God would be the light. It's worth going. It's worth a little suffering down here to go to be with God where we'll live in eternity. No more dying. When we've been there 10,000 years, bright shining as the sun, we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we've first begun. 10,000 years and you've just begun to live. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory. Hallelujah, it's worth it. Hallelujah. Paul said, I, I, I reckon that the sufferings at this present time just is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. This little suffering down here is not something that should cause us to stumble. Keep your focus. Hallelujah. Don't you want to go to that land? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. God's purpose was to have a replica. When God, his idea, he wanted fellowship with man so much. So he made an earth and he put life into his creatures so that they could fellowship with him. And he would come down and he would fellowship with them. But we can only fellowship with him when we're in right standing with him. That's the sweetest fellowship. That's the quality of fellowship that he wants from us. Uh, hallelujah. Walking in harmony with him. My sheep know my voice. A stranger they will not 
Father, for they know not the voice of strangers. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, the same brings forth much fruit. Ask and you shall receive that your joy may be full. Oh, God, I thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. And then he said, Satan's purpose is just the opposite. To fill the earth with evil. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to look at what's going on in our earth and see the evil. Murderers are breaking out, just killing on every hand. Murdering spirits. Families broken up. Substance abuse is at an all-time high. Oh, he's working. The spirit of evil working in people's lives to make miserable people's lives. He came to steal, to kill, and to destroy came to alter God's purpose for humanity. God wanted fellowship with the people that he made. The devil says, I don't want you to fellowship. And so he does everything to keep you out of fellowship with God, your creator. But look at somebody says, I heard the truth and I'm going to fellowship with God. Come on, give God praise in this place. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. It's Satan's purpose. He's always at his purpose. You look at the trend of the devil. He was right there in the beginning. God had two sons. First he had Adam and he made Eve from the rib of Adam and he came right to Eve to alter God's purpose. Then they had two sons. He came to one of them, the oldest one. Got through to him to filter or to infiltrate evil in the earth. God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. He, he destroyed the earth and he said, okay, let's start all over again. But in a little while, Satan had got to him again. He's a thief to rob people out of the plan of God. Life and help come from God. Goodness and mercy and kindness and love comes from God. That's the spirit that you are of, saints. You have a spirit of love and power, soundness of mind. That's who you are. Look at somebody and say, be who you are. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, be who you are. God loves you. He cares so much. There were Old Testament activities we see through what we just read and talked about in Genesis all through the Old Testament, there was demonic activities trying to stop the plan of God. And then in the New Testament, the same thing. It just Paul was trying to deliver the gospel, and there was one Simon a sorcerer, uh, and boy, he stood right up to hinder the gospel. And it just, it just you can just look everywhere and see demonic activities trying to hinder God's plan. No matter what he does, uh, they're out to try to stop him. But we must be one accord with God so that he can use us to stop the tricks and the plans and the evil that the devil is doing. Isn't that right? Hallelujah. One righteous person can do more than you can imagine. God wants to get us in full harmony with him so he can use us to, know, to, 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 ex, to the extent that it will cause demonic powers and people that see the work and activities of God to wonder, says, oh my God, God's alive. But he needs people. He needs people. That's the way he operates. And now look, just like God looks for people to, 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 to possess to his fullness, 
to immerse them in the power of the Holy Spirit and to move them to set captives free, young and old, blind, crippled, insane. It doesn't matter. He looked for people that will work with him to work his plan in the earth. That's why when the Holy Ghost came, he poured out the divine life upon 120 in the upper room and that 120 broke out because they were under the divine hand and power of the Almighty God and then the the apostles came and the Bible records that everywhere Paul and Silas and the other would come, he said they were so intimidated by the principalities, and the, I mean the powers, and the, they were so intimidated by Paul and, and, and others because they were under the influence of God and they began to do such things. They had this report that these who have turned the world upside down, they come here. So they were terrified at the hand of God's people. Will you be a vessel for Will you be a vessel for God? He needs you in his program. He needs you in his kingdom. But the thing about it, you got to cooperate with him. Isn't that right? Can't have one foot here and one foot in the world. That won't work because he delivered us out of the world. So we got to put both feet in God. That's why he said in, in, in Ephesians, you were once darkness but now are you light in the Lord the light of Christ has shined in your heart you know the truth now so he says walk in the light hallelujah walk in the light Okay, Wanda. I need to get this forward. You can help me give me a hand and push it forward here. So God, almost done, but I want to expose some activities of demonic powers. Just want to push it up. Activities of demonic powers. So once they're exposed, they get restless. Now, here's what can happen. I want you to be aware. If there's a need for deliverance, Two things can happen. A person can get free and feel the, the love and the grace of Jesus Christ. Or they can get not get free and they'll feel miserable because the light has exposed the powers. And when they get irritated, they irritate you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It is important that you understand how they work. Okay. Okay. Rebellion, he says, is an act of open or violent resistance to an established government or ruler. Rebellion is an act of open or violent resistance to an established government or rule, rebellion. Rebellion is an attitude displays to, displayed to contradict authority. It originates from a sentiment of indignation or anger and disapproval of a situation and then manifests itself by the refusal to submit or to obey the authority responsible for this situation. In other words, a person, a children may grow up <coughs> their home and a parent may have a, a way of dealing with things that they don't approve of and uh, so sooner or later the person continues to grow then they start to rebellion I ain't gonna do this I'm, and so they rebel in their heart and as they continue to rebel they open, their, open themselves to a spirit of rebellion <coughs> and now they got a spirit of rebellion they don't know it because they don't understand how it works so even in adulthood there's that spirit of rebellion that's there that has to be cast out now because it came in when they rebelled against the authority of parents. Parents are authority. They don't do everything right, but they're still your authority. Isn't that right? A rebelling against one authority will open the door for you to rebel against other authority. The authorities that God set on the earth is family, church, 
and civil government. Rebellion in either one of those there will open a person to the spirit of rebellion. Meditate on this, y'all. And when the person gets open to a spirit of rebellion, it becomes easy to rebel. Because now a person is partially like the spirit that's in them. It's easy for them to rebel. They just feel like that's the way I am, but they're actually under the influence of a spirit of rebellion. God wants to break it. He wants to break it. So rebellion is an attitude displayed to contradict authority. It originates from a sentiment of indignation or anger and disapproval of a situation. And then manifests itself by the refusal to submit or obey the authority. The children get mad with their parents and so they start rebelling. They start rebelling and rebelling and after a while then a spirit of rebellion looks and says, wow, that door is wide open. Do you think he's going to pass by? No, he's going to go in because that's his game. He wants to get in to a person so he now can do his evil work. He can't do his evil work adequately until he gets in a body. Once he gets into a body, that's when he does his damage. You see those murdering spirits? If they didn't get into a man, he wouldn't commit no murder. So they do their wicked evil when they get into a person's life. But thanks be to God for Jesus, for what he's done for us on the cross. You've got to thank him and appreciate what he's done for us. King, that we might be free. Because he knew what demons were doing to humanity. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, people often rebel when they feel mistreated and neglected. Victims who are tired of being oppressed and want to take charge of this, their situation. So they get up and do something about it. I ain't taking this no more. Rebellion is a spirit of disobedience and disrespect for authority. One who has a rebellious nature has the nature of a witch. God has established authority in the home, church, and civil government and to assert self-will above any level of God authority in God's divine order is to entertain demons of rebellion. You see why God wants us free? He died that we might be free. Now, a lot of people had no idea that that's what was happening in their lives. And that's why God wants me to expose the works of darkness. They've been doing it so long. And people didn't have a clue what was motivating them. What was controlling them. Demonic powers. But the good news is, once they're exposed, you don't have to remain there. Jesus sets free. Hallelujah. Glory to God. As long as you don't let those spirits get the best of you because they'll talk to you. They'll talk to you. They'll talk to your heart. That old preacher there, you know, they'll, they'll take you home. They'll make you talk about the preacher. They'll make you do stuff like that. And you, you don't know that it's demons. And so when you cooperate those demons after a while, I mean, you stay right under that influence. What are you saying, Brother Her? I'm exposing their works. God said, expose the works of demons, how they operate. But God sends light of truth so that we can understand how they work and we will not cooperate with them. For this fruit that comes from the spirit is in all goodness and all righteousness and all love. That's the fruit that comes from the Holy Spirit. Some people say they're in the Spirit, but they're in. But they're not in the right Spirit. They're in another Spirit. Please hear what I'm trying to say. It is so important. For so long, many have operated that way and didn't know 
the influence that they were under. And demons, the thing about demons, now when God uses us, he'll reward us if we yield to him. In the same way, demons will reward you. But the only problem, the reward stinks. See, they'll use you and then mess you up, you know. But God won't do that. All right. God has established a thought. I've already I mentioned that, okay. Okay. Let me see here. God is so good. Okay. Oh, oh, oh. Come back here. <laughs> God is so good. All right, I'm almost done. I just have to. Mm-hmm. I'm getting it. Just bringing it down. Okay. Okay, demon activities. One purpose common to all forms of witchcraft is control. Key word, control. One purpose common to all forms of witchcraft is control. Some people, if they can't control the situation, they don't want no parts of it. All right. The root of witchcraft lies in our flesh, our fallen, rebellious, sinful nature. Paul said in Galatians, the works of the flesh are manifest, idolatry and witchcraft. All right. Now, write this down. This is what the Holy Spirit said. These are the things they, other things that he shared. He said, demons study individuals. Satan assigned demons to every person when they get saved. Now, don't let this frighten you, but just be aware. They study your every move. Remember, they're trying to occupy that vessel, right? So, they study. And I, 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 I checked out a book from the library, and, and, and this, this person that set people free from demons, he had some experiences, and God would show him how certain spirits look. And he talked about a spirit of lust, how it works. And, and there was a certain desire that that person had. And he was, and he showed a, the spirit that was standing in front of a person. I mean, eyeing them like you've never seen. Just watching their every mood. And for a strategic time. Something done, some act done. And finally, the moment came when he went into that person's life. And I, he had a picture. He drew a picture of it and this kind of thing. And, and, and then he drew a picture of some other spirits that I saw those same spirits in the, in the spirit. I was like, oh, man, that's what I saw. Those I won't mention, but the point is that I'm saying that they study individuals. So now here's what, what the point is. Here. It says, if, if you be aware that demons study your life. And so the Bible points out what we just read. So be careful how you live. Be careful how you live. Now their activities are going to increase. We must be careful how you live. Be careful how you go off on somebody. Be careful how you talk about somebody. Be careful at what your eyes look at. Demons are studying. That's what he said. Demons study people. So they are strategic in their efforts. They're not unorganized. They're, they're very strategic in what they do. And so that's why God called in the Christians to be orderly. To be uh, in line with God because demons are well organized. 
They, 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 they're not halfway put together. They organize, they, or, or they, they follow orders very, very strictly. And so demons watching, looking for an opportunity to occupy that vessel. Be careful how you live. God don't set her free for us to get in bondage again. Hallelujah. Okay. Second thing he said was, now these are, these are some, some, some scenarios that he, I heard. Some, um, he said, a man who goes off on people frequently will open the door to a demon to gain control of his, of his emotions. And there are a lot of people, spirits have control and in their emotions because they had a habit of going off. Now, once a demon come in to control that area, they find themselves going off and can't help themselves because now the door has been opened for a demon of emotion. Real stuff. Okay. A person, if a person develops a, ha a habit, this is all came from the Lord, as I wrote. If a person develops a habit of telling others how they feel about their parents, when they disapprove of their actions, may grow up and open the door for a spirit of slander or gossip. And sometimes people don't know the root of what the slander or the gossip, but it has an origin, it has a root. It may have started in their childhood with their parents. Look at somebody and say these words. Be careful how you live. Amen. All right. Then, a glutton demon may be attracted to a person who eats all the time. Two or three meals a day in between, just eat, 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 eat. A glutton spirit is real. When that glutton spirit comes in, you can't stop it unless you get delivered. You just eat. My, 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 my dad said like a pig, you know. Because now something has gone inside of you that you didn't know about. He saw the eating in excess. Key word for demon's interest is excess. All right. Okay. So my thought, Lord Jesus, I hear you. I hear you out there, but listen, it's not all bad. Looking at pornographic movies, magazines, romance novels will open a person to a spirit of lust. You know, I had this. I had this. There was a person many years ago. He was a security guard, and this person was a part of our midweek service. And so we were teaching, so whatever we were teaching, he, he kind of took to it. He, he, so he stood at the door for a while because he was on, on, on duty. And finally, he came on in. He sat in the back. And then, uh, so at the end, the Lord said, call him up. Pray for him. So I did. And when I did, that spirit manifest, throw him down. He was totally amazed. He didn't know what just happened to him. I mean, he was like, what in the world is this? Now, all spirits won't manifest coming out like that. Some of them come out very easy. Sometimes they can come out when a person is being loved by the Holy Spirit. It's almost like he squeezes them out with his love. Sometimes they come out coughing. Sometimes they come out with a scream. Sometimes they come out, they throw the person down. You know, it, it, the manifestation is one thing, but the fact that the important thing is that people get free. People get free. Sometime, um, I've had a situation where we prayed for a person to be delivered, and that spirit was cast out, and they dropped dead just like somebody shot them. Manifestations may vary. It's not important, the manifestation. It's getting free. It's what's important. 
Jesus died that we might be free. Hallelujah. 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 Parents that are dysfunctional may provoke a child to rebel and open the door for a spirit of rebellion. I mentioned something similar to that. I, I mentioned also that one time my daughter, a young daughter, about 12 or 13, was giving her mom such a fit. But she didn't know a spirit of rebellion had entered her. If a spirit of rebellion does not enter, then a, the child is kind of tameable. But when that spirit of rebellion comes in, they can whip them and do whatever they want to. The child will still rebel because it's more than the child. It's a spirit of rebellion. You can't tame a demon. You have to cast it out. You can't reason with a demon. You have to cast it out. He'll have you reasoning from sunup to sundown, and he's still there. You hear what I'm saying? A lot of people not, didn't know that, so they spend their time reasoning with demons. It don't work. Because when you throw one thing up, they'll throw another. But you must cast them out. Come on, y'all. Give God some praise. Amen. All right. That's why healing of memories is so important. Hallelujah. Jesus does it all. He heals. All right, the last batch of activities for them. Demons pressure you. They put pressure on people. There was a man that I knew well had come from a revival and he was anxious to get home. And he was tired and run revival all week long. He was coming from out west and he was riding through the mountains. He was so tired, but he was determined that he was going to get home. So he began to go around one of those mountains and the cliff was really steep. And he heard a voice as he was moving around the mountain, tired and weary. Say was a strong command, drive over. It shook him so bad, he had to pull over. They pressure you at strategic times in your life. Even Christians, we must be aware of it. Hallelujah. So they pressure people. Demons afflict. Kenneth Hagin tells about a man that many people had prayed for. He'd been in line, every line, trying to get help. And he had had a headache it was so terrible that he couldn't get rid of it. So God had started dealing with him about deliverance. And so he, when this man got in line, he fell into like a trance and he saw in this vision, this spirit, like a little small monkey he had, had both hands wrapped around the man's head, putting pressure on him. And um, the reason the man couldn't get healed, people hadn't discerned how this demon was afflicting this man in his head. So God had told him about it, and so he just prayed for him and went on. The man didn't get healed. And so then he said, Jesus appeared right there in front of his eyes in, his, in the meeting. And he had a firm, solemn look on his face. And he said, I said in my name, you cast out demons. So nobody knew what he was looking at because Jesus was standing there talking to him. He said, yeah, I know, Lord. I, I, I heard what you said. And Jesus said again, I said in my name, you will cast out demons. So by now, he became a little nervous because he saw 
the stern look on Jesus' face. And he was like, yeah, yeah, Lord, I, 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 I know, Lord, I hear, I hear what you're saying. And one last time, Jesus said, I said, in my name. And he vanished. So it clicked. He said he went back to that man. He says, in the name of Jesus, you foul spirit, I command you to do some. And when he did, he fell to the ground and began to scream. And the man began to holler. Oh, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone, it's gone. It's gone. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. There's some conditions that spirits of infirmity are in people's bodies. They've been to the doctor, taken all kind of medication and can't get relief because of a spirit of infirmity. They got to be cast out. Hallelujah. We got this week of fasting, so I'm expecting some things to happen here, but <laughs> hallelujah. <laughs> Demons oppress the mind with oppressive thoughts. Sometimes so much so to people get headaches. Demons. I know what I'm talking about, y'all. They oppress people's mind. Alcohol or Tylenol won't take that away. Power's got to be broken. They oppress people in the mind. Hallelujah. In the mind, the thoughts, oppressive thoughts. All right, let me go on. I'm almost done. You're two or three others. Not only do they pressure and afflict and oppress, but they deceive. They make a person question God's love and God's motives. They deceive. They blind, try to blind the mind. Isn't that right? That's what the Bible says in Ephesians. Thank God he stepped in when our minds were blinded. And God gave the light so that we could be saved. But demons blind and they oppress people and they, they afflict them and they deceive people. And sometimes a person can be in deception. They deceive you about another person. And God sees all of us that have really been redeemed as saved. And he doesn't get into that kind of stuff, seeing a person as evil. But demons do. They make you look at people and say they're evil. And naturally, if you feel like a person is evil, you're not going to take to them, right? That's the work of demons. Oh, you hear what I'm saying? Hallelujah. Jesus loved the weakest one. Hallelujah. He said, a bruised reed or a smoking flax. He'll not quench, not put out. Demons seduce and tempt. Demons are behind all arguments and strife. My God, my God. Demons divide and cause disharmony. And that's why in Ephesians he said, take unto you the whole armor. The whole armor of God. Isn't that right? That we're no match for the devil in our own selves. So with these activities, we've exposed a lot of the works of the enemy. And now some of them, if they don't give us a fit, they're going to come out because they've been exposed. I want us to stand and give God some thanks for this day, for his mercy, for his love for us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. They are demons of greed. I've seen them. And they're subtle and deceptive. 
I remember one time I saw a demon of green in the spirit and it makes you desire things. It makes you desire things. But it's not just a desire, it's a strong desire. Money. Spirits of greed. And when I saw him, he was dressed up like a nice businessman. So deceptive. I could say more, but I'm going to pause. Father, I thank you. I've given what you gave. I thank you. I give you praise because it's your desire to set your people free. They don't want to be exposed. But I thank you for the exposure. I thank you for what you've done for us. Chosen us. Redeemed us. Filled us with the Holy Spirit. Wrote our names in the Lamb's book of life. made us your children that we may work the works of God now I ask Lord that you would further set us free from things that oppress us oh God oh God we're your people and the sheep of your pasture as we come to the altar in repentance each and every one in whatever you feel God tugging at your heart. You would know. Please make your way to the altar at this point. Hallelujah, Jesus.